Okay, it looks like everybody's on, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, before I do that, though, you should see that there's a little option for you guys to ask questions. So if at any point you have a question come up, um, you'll be able to use that feature. If you want for right now, you could just type a question with your name um, and your chapter just to make sure that's working for you. You can go ahead and do that right now. Okay, perfect. I see those coming in. So let me get started. Um, like I said, this is the Vault webinar for April. So what we're going to be going over is just different things you guys can do to wrap up the term. Uh, make sure your accounts are like set up and ready to go once we move through the summer and then begin fall. Um, my name is Hannah Gunderson, and then I also have Sarah Beth Russell with me helping today. She'll be the ones um, going through your questions and answering those for you. And she's also going to give you a quick um, overview of what Omegify is and what we do. Awesome. Thank you, Hannah. Well, like Hannah said, I'm going to go ahead and give just a quick overview of um, Omegafy and kind of some of the things that our company does. So for more than 30 years, we have provided technology solutions to help our customers manage their finances and streamline their operations, as well as recruit new members and communicate with those members. So whether it's working <clears throat> with 57 different headquarters or local chapters, house corporations, IFC and Panhellenic Councils, and alumni associations across more than 650 campuses. We remain the industry leader when it comes to technology in the fraternity and sorority community. Based out of Columbus, Georgia, we securely process more than 1.1 million per day for our clients and have securely processed more than $4 billion since uh, four billion dollars since sorry since 1992 uh, we are also deeply committed to serving promoting and advancing the fraternity and sorority experience we aim to make raving fans with every individual or group that we work with by reaching innovating and acting with agility which are some of our company qualities we challenge ourselves to dream big every day and we help others to achieve their own dreams so to say we're passionate about what we do is an understatement and it's this passion that has encouraged our clients to trust us to do the heavy lifting so that you guys can focus on your chapter's mission and having fun. Perfect, thank you, Sarah Beth. Um, I'm gonna move on now to our agenda for this webinar. Um, as you can see here, there's five different things and then I left a little bit of time for just a quick reminder and some Q&A. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing, we'll show you guys how to send mass emails, um, update your member roster, update your billing roster, which sounds similar, but they're a little bit different, um, pay any outstanding invoices, and then set up summer statements, whether those are reminders or if you guys are gonna be charging your members over the summer. So I'm gonna switch to Vault really quickly so you guys can, um, just see actually what I'm talking about. I think it'll be easier to follow. So like I said, the first thing we're gonna do is go over mass emails. Now you may have used this function before, but um, this is gonna be really useful for cleaning up some of those outstanding balances you may have for your members, especially anybody who's gonna be graduating um, this spring. So what you'll do, like I did, I went to this communication tab, I clicked mass email, and then it's gonna take you to this page and you have this drop down. Um, you have a few options. There is this delinquency notification template. So that's something that's already pre-written um, for you guys that you could use. And it'll just, you, you can pick the template and go through and maybe select any members that it would apply to. But what I recommend doing is going to this select area and then just um, filtering criteria to send email. And this will let you narrow down exactly who you want to send these emails to. So if you want to do it for people who have um, a past due, severely past due, any of these aging statuses, you could do it. Maybe you want to do it by member status. So only for initiates or for alumni, um, you can do it that way. And it'll let you filter out the group of people you want to do. And then you just click next. And it'll let you compose your own email. So this will work like Outlook or anything else you've used, um, Gmail. You'll put in your subject. You can just write the email like you'd like. And then down here, it'll let you select who you want to send this email to. So you'll just check their names. And then you'll go up here and click send email. Now in this email, you can just say like, hey, the term's wrapping up. Um, if you're graduating, make sure you pay your, you know, any outstanding balances before you 
go ahead and graduate so you can be in good standing with the chapter. Um, basically, whatever you feel like is phrased best for your chapter, you can do it that way. And once you send that, it'll send to all um, of the people you selected and we'll get a copy of it. And then that way, it'll just prompt them to log into their Omega Phi accounts and pay their balance. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is actually updating these um, membership rosters. This step is gonna look a little bit different for you guys based on which organization you're with. So some of you guys will be doing this step within Vault, which is what I'm gonna show you today. Other chapters, you guys may do your membership updates um, on a different platform. And so I think uh, you should know how to do that. If not, you can always reach out to like your support team and ask the best way for you to update membership statuses. But I'm just gonna show you the way if you do your membership updates through Vault, this is how you'll do it. So you're gonna click the chapter tab and you're gonna click update member statuses. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So you'll just check the boxes of people who are graduating. So maybe these four people right here are graduating. We'll put in their graduation date. Maybe it was last Friday. Um, you'll do that for each of them. And then up at the top, it'll have you change their status. So these people were listed as a new member, but let's say they were graduating. Um, you just click change to, you'd click alumnus, and then you'll scroll to the bottom and you'll click update member statuses. That will move them um, to be listed as an alumni with your national or international organization. Or if you're doing it on a platform that's not Vault, if you do your membership update somewhere else, it'll push these into Vault so your members are now um, listed as alumnus or uh, wh whatever they're switching to. You may also want to do this throughout the summer if you um, hear from anybody in your chapter who maybe for whatever reason is not going to be returning to school or rejoining the chapter, maybe they're transferring. Um, you would just go to the same page as well if you're going to um, if you do your updates through Vault, you'll click their name. And then instead of change to alumnus, you can just uh, pick one of these other reasons. So maybe um, they're just disassociating for the chapter. Maybe it's something else. You can click other and just go there. Um, sometimes too, like with this disassociated, it'll have you give a reason. So you can continue to fill that in and then you'll scroll to the bottom, click update member status. And that way um, you guys have an accurate rep or record for your headquarters. Um, of who is and isn't in the chapter, what their status is with the organization. Um, just keep the records updated that way. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is the billing status. So this is a second roster you have to keep up with. Um, it's kind of connected to the chapter roster, but it is different. This, like I said, this chapter membership roster is just showing your national organization who like what each person's status is, but this billing one is what's gonna determine whether or not they get charges moving forward. So once you move people to alum, we're gonna have them go to inactive billing. So you'll click this billing tab and then you'll click update billing statuses. And here it'll let you select them again. Um, so let's say we'll move Jordan and it's automatically gonna have it switched to inactive billing because right now they're inactive or they are active members being actively billed. So it'll switch them to inactive and it'll have you give the reason. Um, in this case, most of these are gonna be either like alumnus or graduated since we are coming up on spring and we have all of our seniors graduating. So maybe we'll just select graduation, scroll to the bottom and click um, update billing status. But if we go up here, I do wanna show you one more thing really quick, I'm sorry. Um, you may notice that some of these people have these like exclamation marks. So these people, you'll notice you can't move them to inactive billing. That's because they probably have access to Vault. Um, if you click it, it'll tell you why. So this member has access. In this scenario, you'll have to um, remove their Vault access first before you can mark them as inactive billing. So to do that, you would just click this gear icon, click Vault users, and then um, you'll be able to remove their their vault access and then go back to this update billing status and move them to inactive billing. Um, this roster is very important, like I said, you wanna make sure it's updated so people aren't getting charged that don't need to be charged. But another thing is you don't want, if your chapter pays, um, you know, like for Omega Phi services, if you do not move these people to inactive billing, you will be charged for members who aren't actually like using the software. So you'll wanna make sure all of these updates are done before fall starts. I recommend just doing it right away um, in May when most people graduate. That way you have it out of the way and you're, you don't have to worry about it over the summer. Um, so that's how you update these. The next thing I'm gonna show you is 
I'm going to go back to this billing tab and click member list by billing group. Once you have these people move to inactive billing, we'll scroll to the bottom and you can see this inactive billing records. Um, some of these people you see have a balance. So with the mass email that you guys sent earlier, they'll be like prompted to pay on their account. But if you see um, in the balance, maybe they have something in like parentheses or in red, that means they have a credit balance. You're gonna wanna review their account to see if maybe they need to be given um, a refund if it's a graduating member. You don't wanna do this for current members, but anybody who's no longer in active billing, if they have a credit balance down here, you're gonna wanna see the account to see if we have to refund them. And I'll show you where you can add that refund. Um, in just a second, but that's something you'll want to review once you update both the member roster and the billing roster. So going up here, we're going to go to the bill pay tab. And if we had to add one of those refunds, um, you'll just click payments. You can click this red add button. You'll choose refund and it essentially just has you fill in the blanks. It'll only let you give a refund to eligible members. So on the account I'm currently on, it's a test account. Nobody has a credit balance. Um, because they aren't real people who are paying, but if they had and they had a credit balance, here their name would be listed. So you just select them and then fill in these blanks and you can submit a refund for them, for those seniors. Another thing while we're on this payments tab, I'm gonna show you that you'll wanna clean up before the end of the semester is any outstanding bills. So you'll see here that there's a bill, it says it's approved for $100, but you'll notice that the invoice date was the 15th of March and that, um, the due date was the first. So both these days have passed and it's still sitting here approved. Most likely what the reasoning is, is that there's not enough money in the bill pay fund for it to pay. So if we click bill pay again and we go to registers, we'll see um, our operating fund right here has an available balance of negative $100 and that's because the bill was approved but there wasn't money. So what you guys will have to do if you have any of these, um, if you click this dollar icon, you can transfer money. So you could type in $100 transfer from, let's say there was money in this account to transfer, you take it from there, put it in the operating fund, click submit, and that'll move the money over so those invoices get paid and you can um, make sure everything's paid off before the end of the year. Some of you may also have bank accounts. So if you have that, um, it should show up in this transfer from, instead of bill pay fund, there'll be another section that says external bank account and you can select your bank account and transfer money from, um, let's say you have like a Wells Fargo account, it'll take it from Wells Fargo and put it into your bill pay fund to cover these invoices for you. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you guys that I think you should check before the end of the semester is to make sure that you have summer statements set up. So that's gonna be under the billing tab and we're gonna go to billing overview. Now these summer statements, I know some people don't charge their members over the summer and that's fine. Um, we'll still set them up as reminder statements. So basically you'll have a date that statements go out, but only people with a past due balance are gonna get a statement prompting them to pay. So the way you can check if you have that set up, some of you may, um, we may have set it up for you already if you're just doing reminders, uh, would be under here, you would click this drop down, and it would say summer 2023 if it was set up. In this case, it's not, so you could click this resume billing or set up billing option and then um, just choose the term and it'll let you, it'll take you through the whole process. Now this again is something, if you don't have the option to set up billing, just reach out to your support rep. We may have to do it um, on our end for you guys, just because we do set up some of these summer reminders. So you can just send an email saying like, hey, we don't plan on charging people over the summer, but we would like to send invoices for anyone who has a past due bill. And the um, support reps will get that set up for you. Or if you guys do wanna charge your members over the summer, maybe some chapter dues, maybe you wanna get ahead on billing national dues, you can send that in as well. And we can set up statements that actually charge members over the summer, just as we do for, um, any like fall, winter, spring billing terms, we can do it that way. It's up to you guys, it's not required, but no matter what, you probably do wanna have some sort of summer statement going out just to make sure people are being prompted to pay on their accounts. Um, another thing I do wanna bring up, I know there's, this is backtracking just a little bit, but how, when, when you update members to inactive billing, I know some people are concerned that um, they won't get statements anymore. If they still owe money, we'll continue to send them a statement prompt, prompting them to pay, but we just won't add any new um, additional scheduled charges to their accounts. So you don't have to worry about 
being afraid to move some of those alumni or maybe people who aren't returning to inactive billing, as long as statements are set up and they owe money, they'll continue to get um, a billing statement in the mail asking them to pay on their account. The only additional charge they may get is if you have late fees turned on, they'll keep getting late fees, but they aren't going to get any new chapter dues, national dues, anything else you guys have um, scheduled. So that's it for showing you guys on Vault. Um, a quick reminder I wanted to give you as well is for tax filing, like 990 filing. Some of you guys I know are responsible for filing for your chapters. Maybe your um, national organization does it for you. So this may not apply to everybody, but I would check. If you don't know, I would check with either like a finance advisor, if you have a leadership consultant with your national organization, or you can email um, your support rep with the Megafi, I would just email and ask to see if that's something your chapter or you as like your chapter's officer is responsible for doing. But um, people do need to submit their 990s for their chapter. And if you had your fiscal year ending um, December 31st, that is due May 1st. So that's coming up. It's a little less than a month away. So that's something you're going to want to do. Um, we do have an option I can show you really quick actually on Vault. If you do file it for yourself or for your chapter, um, we have this tax filing option. It is an extra charge. So you can click here to learn more or you can email 990 at Omegafy to ask about pricing and if that's something your chapter does. But again, before doing this, I would check with um, an advisor or somebody to make sure that it's your responsibility as a chapter officer to file this and not somebody else's just because we don't want um, things getting like double submitted or anything like that. But that is just a reminder to be aware of. Um, I haven't been looking at the questions. I don't know if Sarah Beth's been answering, but does anybody have any questions about what we went over today? Yeah, Hannah, we've actually had several uh, questions come in. So um, I've answered most of them. I do have one uh, outstanding that I was about to answer, but we did have the question, uh, what's the difference between alum and graduation and the billing status reason? Uh, and typically the alum status versus graduation, alum doesn't necessarily mean that they have graduated. That could be maybe they've gone early alum for um, a specific like program and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, major they're in or various other reasons um, but typically that alum just means that they probably it, it may not mean that they've graduated exactly but graduation is you know definitively like they graduated and that's what you're marking the mass yep that's exactly right um was there any other questions um yeah another really good question we had just so everybody um is aware in case they missed it but how to remove vault access i don't know if you wouldn't mind mm -hmm. going back to the that yeah yeah, yeah so under yeah. the gear icon where mm -hmm. Hannah's is at and then vault users yep you can just go here and what you'll do is you'll click the trash can icon in line with them They'll say, are you sure you want to delete this user? And you just click OK. That's not going to delete their um, Omega Phi account or anything. It's just deleting their access to Vault. So you'll click that OK button. And then once you go back to this billing update, um, billing status, they'll no longer have that exclamation mark next to their name. And let's see, we did have another question. I know somebody asked if um, a recording of this would be sent out and I did just want to clarify that anybody who has registered will receive that recording. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to be sending out a recording and then we're also going to be posting an article under this get help section that'll have this um, checklist essentially for you guys to go through and we'll send it in the email as well just so you guys can review anything um, to make sure you have all those points. But let me go back. I can, um, and we do have you. several oh, questions that just mm -hmm. came in with like in the last two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, let's see, starting off, uh, what if we updated our officer roles in our portal and they're not updating in a mega fi? Um, I'm assuming portal is maybe what you're updating them in for your organization. Those don't um, pull into vault necessarily. So you have to update their vault access separately. Giving them access to vault is going to be a little different. So they may be listed as 
like technically somebody could be listed as the treasurer, but if you have not granted them vault access, um, it's not going to show. So similar to when Hannah showed under the year icon going to mm -hmm. vault users, you can add a vault user the same way or edit their permit permission. So mm -hmm. you can add a user like this. It'll let, yep, you'll just select their name and then um, you can choose their level of access. So you can just go through here and decide what they will and will not need to um, access on each page. And you'll notice the difference between manage and view. View means they can look at the page, but they won't be able to edit anything. Um, manage is what's required to do a lot of those updates I showed you. So if you need to be updating member statuses or billing statuses, you'll need to have manage access to those tabs. If not, you're just going to be able to see what people's um, different records are, but you won't be able to change them. And if they already um, have vault access, let's say maybe they were in a lower officer position that previously only had view access and you need to update them, they should be in this list and you'll click the pencil icon in the same mm -hmm. way, you'll just update that access. Yep. And then we have one that asked um, from Greg, if a member is on a payment plan, uh, bi-weekly, for example, how can Megafy invoices be used to set this up? So in that scenario, we won't necessarily be able to send them invoices bi-weekly just because when we send um, a statement, they have to have a minimum of like two weeks for them to pay and then there's a late after date, so it's not going to be exactly two weeks. What you could do um, is use that mass email tool again. So if you have someone paying biweekly, you could update them this way. So maybe you just want to um, filter it. You'll select their name and then you could send them a reminder. Um, they also may have the option of setting up an auto pay. I don't know if it'll let them do that frequency. I would reach out. I have the different support information. I would reach out to this like operation support email and ask if they could maybe set up an auto pay bi-weekly that would automatically just um, draft their bank account. You won't be able to do that. They would have to set it up on their Omega Phi account, but we aren't going to be able to actually send statements. You just have to use that mass email tool or um, kind of like follow up with it outside of Omega Phi. And when you do that, just depending on when statements are going out for your actual actual chapter, you would want to make sure uh -huh. they're charged accordingly so that they can pay that bi-weekly. Um, and depending, you might want to turn off their late fees. Late fees. Yeah. If you're charging them like up front and the rest of the chapter is getting late fees. Um, and then another question that we got, um, is there a charge per person with vault access? Um, no, that vault access does not, um, it is only per member on your billing roster when that state, those statements go out. And then the last question we have is can members pay into their account? Can members, um, can members pay into their, I think they're asking if members can pay towards their account for fall dues during the summer, um, which technically Yes, but you do want to be careful with that when it comes to reporting, because if they're basically getting credits on their account, when you actually assess the charges to them, if you guys are documenting like what income account it goes to, it's not going to show that. It's just going to go all into basically like showing a credit. Um, like an overpayment. I would yeah. recommend if you have people who want to maybe pay for fall early, you could set that up as like a summer statement. So maybe majority of your chapter isn't going to be charged over the summer, but if you have a group that wants to pay early, um, you can contact this operation support email or the phone. You can call in, text, and they can help you set up a billing group to put those people that want to pay early. So they can essentially just get all of their fall charges in the summer and pay that way. And then when fall rolls around, maybe they won't get, um, charged with everyone else they would just stay in that that early payment group and not assess yeah. additional charges definitely better to have it charged early and then that way like for reporting and and tax filing and everything like things are in order mm -hmm. um, but yeah. two more questions that came in um 
One is asking how do you send a refund check to a parent and not a collegiate? The home address mm -hmm. is in a Megafy, but not in the parent's name. So for this, you actually, um, because it's the student's account and their name is on the account, when we send mm -hmm. the refund check, it's only ever going to be in their name. Um, mm -hmm. So when you send that refund, as Hannah's showing, going through the steps here, um, it's mm -hmm. going to always be addressed out to the student. And then you can choose what address. Um, yep. So like if their home address is on there, you can choose that. Now, if you're wanting to specifically like pay the parent out, you could technically, I guess, like you cut them a check. But yeah. I, but I would if you're doing it to the member, but you could just have it sent to their home address. Um, you also could use this check care of section, but mm -hmm. I think it's still going to, um, I be think when it's, friends, it's going to be in the member's name just because it's on the member's actual account that the credit's on. And then the other question that we have is some brothers accepted cash donations for a philanthropy event and we do not have an external bank account how can we get that cash into vault um, so if you guys have an operating fund and you're wanting to get that into vault um, we don't recommend sending in cash the best way to do that is deposit that into a bank and then have someone cut the check for the amount um, or Hannah I don't know if you have any other suggestions mm -hmm. for that yeah usually what will happen is um, either people send us a money order or somebody will put it in their account maybe the treasurer whoever collected it the person in charge of your philanthropy and then they cut a check the I know sometimes people don't want to do that, but it is just a little bit easier because then if the check were to get lost in the mail, you guys can void it instead of that cash just getting lost um, or if it, like somebody steals the mail. You know what I mean? Like just there's different variables that could happen that make it risky. So I recommend if you could put it into account and then write rewrite the check doing it that way. Maybe you have like an advisor who you would trust to do it, um, but basically just something where you can track it or have the ability to like void that check and reissue it that way you don't lose the money um i would i would do it that way um and then a follow-up to the question earlier about members paying towards their fall dues uh, mary was saying they want to pay when they get their paychecks so like hannah said um earlier with charging them earlier during summer, that's probably going to still be the best way. Um, so if they're getting their payment at a certain time and at the beginning of the summer, you want to go ahead and pre-charge them for their fall dues, then they can pay throughout the summer, especially if you guys don't have late fees turned on for the summer. That would be the best way to do that. And then we did get one last question about mm -hmm. are there fees charged on credit card donations uh, in the donation form? Uh, yeah, there is like how, uh, let me, I don't know if I'll be able to show you on here just because it's a test account. So we don't have actual payments coming in, but I'm sure you guys have seen when you go to the accounting tab, account registers, and you click this Omegify last 30 days, y'all's register will have things listed because you have members paying. You'll see that um, merchant discount fee that'll show up for donations as well. So it'll say, um, merchant discount fee, like contributions, I believe, something along those lines. And you'll see that it does take that credit card fee out of the donation. It'll all show up on this register. And that that fee is strictly to cover the processing fee. So it is taken out of any credit card payments or donations because um, that's basically going straight to the credit card company just to pay that processing. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, I think, all the questions for now. Okay, perfect. Well, if you guys have any more questions come up, we have, I have the contact information listed here. You could take a picture of it, screenshot it, write it down if you don't have it. Um, but yeah, you have this email, our phone number, if you want to call in and get help that way, or you can text. Uh, the one thing I will say, just be aware of is um, you can text us as much as you want. Don't be afraid to double text, triple text, whatever your questions. But if it is over the weekend, our texts do go to our work laptops and work desktops. So um, 
if it's the weekend, you may not get a response until Monday. So just don't think anybody's ignoring you or anything or that it's weird to send a bunch. They are probably going through. We'll just have to get back with you on Monday when we come back into the office. Um, but other than that, you guys should be good. Also, this get help button, you'll see down here, I can show you really quick. I should have done it earlier. But this yellow button, if you click it, has a bunch of articles um, that'll walk you through different things. You may have questions on, you can also search. So definitely utilize that tool as well if you have any questions come up. But if everybody's good to go, I'm going to go ahead and end this webinar. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, and like I said, reach out if any other questions come up.